had a really blessed to have had a few people on the show like like Ben Hodson is the CEO and founder of Job Nimbus a really big CRM. Mm -hmm. We also had Pierce Dormeyer who's I've forgotten his role but what one of the leaders at Eagle View. We're going to talk about them a little bit today. And I asked both of them the same question on different episodes like what what facet of the construction and trades like what facet of contracting businesses broadly speaking is the most ripe for disruption especially when you consider technology. And both of them like clear as day were like sales. Like this sort of like drive yep. to house, meet with customer, walk around house, go inside, show the brochure, have a coffee, try to close the deal. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. It's it's I've Lord knows I've sold many, 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 many jobs that way. But their take on it was like if you look at the way other parts of businesses are being influenced in other sectors. This is sort of next on the chopping block. It's just, it's inefficient. There's windshield time. There's gas that gets burnt. It's not necessarily in line with consumer preferences. And so I think you guys are really at the, you know, we talked about this offline. You're at the forefront of a movement that I think is going to happen over the next 10 years. You guys are just very, very early adopters of it. So let, let's actually like, that's probably a good segue. Let's dive into how you guys have designed this. And in no, do you guys just kind of break this down? You talked about it last week at Summit. Just kind of break down how you guys have set this up, where the lead flows into, how it's dealt with from there. And I'm just going to pepper you with follow-up questions as we go through it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so essentially, all leads are going to come through our web form, um, whether it's from online, they hear us on the radio, or they call in, we're going to direct them right to the website. And from there, our website has qualifying questions uh, before they submit their estimate or their request for estimate. Once that comes in, they're going to get that's the kind of the, the first initial automated email. And that's a pretty traditional one. We've got your information. Thanks for you know asking. Uh, from there, this is where we kind of switched it up. Our, our VA then qualifies this lead internally for us without the salesperson having to get involved. Um, so she's going to ask qualifying questions like, you know, are you looking to get the whole roof done? When do you want this project to be completed by? Are there any outside parties involved? Um, stuff like that. Uh, once that's determined, then she goes ahead and processes the request for an Eagle View report. Uh, once that Eagle View report then comes in, we have various templates that we've very detailed and built out for all the different products that we install. This includes work scope and everything is line itemized. I mean, right down to a box of staples. Mm. Um, once that's done, they, she can then import the Eagle View measurements inside the template. And then from there, we've trained her how to view certain things on that Eagle View. She's looking for skylights, chimneys, flashings, um, you know, if there's like overhead lines, stuff like that. She's gonna be looking for these key indicators can i ask you a couple of things i've got yeah. questions like the list is already piling up where where yeah. like so you guys do you have a fairly omni-channel approach when it comes to lead generation you mentioned they all get driven to the website i'm assuming to do a form fill but what mm -hmm. are the maybe top three or top five like sources is it paid ads is it referrals is it like what are your lead we channels? are heavily organic we rank number one on google for our, our area for our niche uh that that, that drives it but uh, it's the brand presence that we build. A lot of our marketing is not built around your traditional sales model either. It's about uh, informative, educating the customer on the products, who we are, our credentials, what we bring to the table, and just the brand brand presence in the city on billboards and radio. We, we kind of own the radio space. I think there's a couple of radios uh, that, that we're on that we're the only roofing yeah. company on oh, the radio. Exclusive, yeah. Yeah. So these are these are these are really our inbound leads. They've found yeah. you or heard about you somewhere, either through Google, on the radio, on a billboard, whatever. And there's enough interest that they want to engage with you. So they they I'm sure all your CTAs on all your ads basically push to the website, one centralized place. They go yeah. through that capture and then now it's in VA world. And I kind of interrupted you there, but now the VA picks that lead up and is going through some qualifying and moving them along the chain, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's honestly, I'm, I come from a marketing background as well, and it's a bit of an anomaly. It's uh, There's so <laughs> much bandwidth that we have that we could turn the volume up on actual digital marketing that it's almost scary if, if we actually were to dip into that where we could go. Now, obviously, that, that model is not going to apply to everyone. We're, we're lucky to be in an area where we do have the brand authority, uh, but I would just kind of replace and complement that with more digital marketing for someone else if they wanted to apply this, this model, the sales model. Yeah, but I think the point you're making is like, it's 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 because it's been well designed and it's very 
the funnel is very clean. It is sort of just a numbers game at this point. You could yeah. you could just double your ad spend and double your lead flow. Like it, it's very exactly. much like having when you get to this stage. And I know because we've you know for the last six years been on this journey with with what we do. It's like what you want to have is a knob that you can just turn where it's like exactly. dollars in, customers out. And you guys have created that. So anyway, that's really really interesting. This is more about the sales process. So let's get back to it. I think I cut you off, Brad, when you're talking about she's she's qualified. The qualified leads get a get an eagle view is mm -hmm. that the case does every every lead that kind of hits a certain bit of criteria get sent a, an eagle view automatically yeah exactly everything that we do is from eagle view remote remote based uh you know we very rarely do we have to go outside uh to do a, a measurement uh if we do we actually use hover which is another digital asset that we use um, and, and sometimes we'll even get the customer actually to go out, do their 360 pictures again, just get keeping us inside the office and just high efficiency, right? For our listeners that maybe don't know what Eagle view or hover is, do you want to maybe just give a really quick breakdown of, of that bit of tech? Yeah. It's pretty cool. So, so, so they both kind of just with Eagle view, it's a, it's all aerial imaging that they use. It's all proprietary imaging. Uh, so what they do is with these photo, uh, rooftop photos, they're going to break it down and they're going to give you all of the details, your pitches, your, your square footages, all your linear measurements, valleys, rakes, eaves, all are going to be detailed on that for you. And they break them all down uh, at the very bottom too. And you get all these great pictures, you get the co-branded. So again, it just helps build that brand trust with the customer. With Hover, it's actually using photographs taken from your from your phone. Mm -hmm. uh, and it tells you where to take pictures around the building. And then it's gonna generate a whole same same idea, a digital takeoff um, of this of the project. And I mean you you're down to an inch in terms of accuracy. But the 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 net uh, benefit is that like uh, there's no there's absolutely zero need to go out to site to measure things or look at yeah. things it's all a digital report that gets sent to you to a level a level of accuracy you're not even going to be able to do with a tape measure and a ladder and so uh, point being that removes a huge amount of trips to huge. go and gather this stuff and that's yeah. why a VA is able to do it from wherever she operates uh, or he mm -hmm. operates um, what was I going to ask oh so, you know, a lot of people go, and I've heard this at conferences, like, oh, like Eagle Views are so expensive. It's, I don't know, 60 bucks a pop or 80 bucks a pop. You guys have obviously done the, done the math on this where it's like we can afford to send these out very liberally because we convert them efficiently. So maybe just talk a little bit about how you guys calculated that. Yeah, I mean, really, when you break it down, it doesn't take very long to see the cost benefit. Uh, if you look at the average Eagle View, which is actually like between like twenty five and forty dollars for residential, um, you take the time to get in the truck, drive to location, set up your ladder, go measure the roof, and then maybe potentially get caught in some left field conversation with the customer. Then you know by the time you get back to the office, you spent you know three four hours potentially off you know off site not doing anything, and you haven't even got the estimate done at this point. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you really break it down, it, it really doesn't take long to see the cost benefit. Well, if you're, if you're talking a high level person, you're not sending out one of your, your low level laborers to do these measurements or to, to take uh, that time with the customer either. So if you actually mm -hmm. average out what you're paying your top level people to be offsite, to not even actually be working on the sale portion yet, because mm -hmm. it, realistically, your, your customer is not going to be interested until they see that price. So a lot of that is just preliminary wasted time that could be done in a, in a more efficient way. Yeah. And it's something to be said that it's this whole process that allows us to do a high volume of estimates every month. Like, for example, if you look at the average uh, salesperson that's doing it in a traditional manner, they're usually doing two leads a, a, a day. So two leads a day translates into 10 leads a week, translates into 40 leads a month. Right. So where our, as our, our salesperson right now is currently averaging in the peak seasons between 150 to 200. So right there, we've three to four X to the output. Right. So, you, okay. G going back to this process though, uh, an Eagle view mm -hmm. gets, gets pulled. You guys build that into a beautiful, like client facing proposal, by the way, uh, for those of you listening, uh, on audio and you want to have like a, you want to have the visual aspect of this, I'm going to include, they put to, Brad and Devin put together some really great slides with some nice infographics and it just kind of lays out how all of this flows. We're, we're going to talk about this as concretely and, and as with as much detail as we can. But if you're a visual person, you just want to see the whole thing laid out in front of you, go to the link in the description and download that and check it out. Um, so, okay. 
I digress. It gets Eagle View gets pulled. Uh, beautiful client facing proposal gets sent. Talk, talk a little bit about like the nurture sequence or what kind of happens there from from there on. Yeah, absolutely. So once the proposal is built, uh, this it's it's mindful to say that also like at this point the salesperson will do a quick vet of that estimate before it sends out to the customer, and this is just us doing our due diligence, making sure that nothing gets missed. But that's the first time that the salesperson actually has to really get involved and look at this and he gets familiarized with the contract. Then it gets sent out to the customer. Once it's sent out to the customer, uh, we do have a 30 day uh, sequence that we put in place. Uh, so the first day we send out, uh, the day after receiving the proposal, we'll send out a list of our credentials and kind of like, this is why you're choosing us. Um, you know, our master lead certifications, all of our installation certifications, uh, any industry awards that we have. Um, we put that all out there. Uh, and again, that's just building the trust with the customer. Mm -hmm. uh, from there, two days later, the customer is going to, we're going to do a, a follow up and it's a Q&A following up. Do you have any questions? If do you need any help making your decision? Uh, and then after that, we're going to go into, and this is actually one of my highest converting emails. It's 10 questions to ask your roofing contractors. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we send out this really beautiful email that goes out with a list of questions and of course, our answers underneath them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's probably by far, probably 40% uh, conversion on that email alone. Why, why does that email, why is that the one that really kind of captures attention and gets people to click? Is it transparency, honesty? Like, have you thought about what it is the customer likes about that specific message? Yeah, I, I would say that that really comes down to just removing the ego from it. And it's, it, if, even if you're not choosing us, we want mm -hmm. you to be informed on the product, uh, what else is out there in the market, what other guys are potentially promising that they're not actually gonna be able to live up to. Uh, we have a 25 year warranty. Oh, that sounds great, but it's only a manufacturer's defect warranty. It's not actually gonna cover if you get a leak or if they installed it improperly. There's a lot of things in there within that email that go beyond, okay, even if you're not gonna choose us, we want you to be informed as a customer about the product, about the industry and the caveats of dealing with uh, the chuck in the truck, I guess, if you will, and the, the false promises that are being made. So. Mm. It's, it's, it's not really a sales pushy uh, oriented. It's, it's really just about, hey, we, we want to protect you and educate you as well, even if you don't go with us. And you've noticed like like in the data, and I think you guys are using AccuLinks or it like, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. What, whatever you're using to uh, for, for marketing automations, you're checking the, the click-through rates or the conversion rates of the emails. And this specific one converts the best out of a long chain of emails. Yeah, no, 100%. And that actually was born from when I used to do in-person sales. One of the things I used to say to the customer was, hey, even if you don't choose us, you should be looking out for these questions. Yeah. Right? And yeah. it's the same ones that I put in my email. It right? never it never hurts to kind of subtly shit talk your competition <laughs> just a little bit in a classy yeah. way. Keep yeah. it fair. Keep it above board. But I, I know it's a little subtle hint to like, hey, you know, they might be cheaper, but. Um, OK, so that is email. What do you say? That's three of four. Or where, yeah. where were so, we at on the so, flow? So right now that's going to be so that's the third email that went out. Uh, and then next, we're following into a trigger that's at set at day seven after receiving their estimate. If they haven't chosen us yet. This triggers the salesperson to do a phone call follow up. Mm -hmm. And this allows for a very personal touch point. Uh, so at this point now, they're talking to someone on the phone. Um, he can ask them to come in, make an appointment to our showroom uh, or close the deal on the phone. Uh, but it, this really helps bring in that personal aspect to the sales uh, whole process. Um, what percent of, of sales convert from the email nurture versus what percentage actually require some, some phone calls and some, some actual like hands-on sales skill from your salesperson? I mean, at this point, I would say we're about 40, 45 percent is an actual like of the of the whole scale of, of approvals. Yeah. Uh, about 40, 45 percent are actually just being, yes, we'd like to move forward with you. When can we book a time? Right. Um, and then but we with all of our people, we bring them into our showroom, uh, walk them through the whole system and, and really show them what we're going to do, how we're going to do it uh, before we sign that contract. But what I'm at, I think what I'm curious about is if you've been in sales, you know that there are hot leads, there are cold leads, there's lukewarm leads, there's everything in between. These um, your automations because mm -hmm. they're they're timed correctly, they're written well, the proposal's beautiful, the whole experience to this point has been very seamless. You're basically skimming all the freebies off the top. <laughs> yeah using automation so that the salesperson at day seven is basically all that person is doing 
is working on the leads that the deals that need to be worked on. He's not yeah. like he's not working on the freebies, which require no effort, and he's not working on like the dead tire kickers because those have been disqualified. His entire focus is on estimates and open deals that like require that type of skill, that type of handling, which I just think is like, I've done enough sales. I'm like, man, that would be so cool if your entire day was just working <laughs> on that little bit of the process, but it never is. You're doing measurements, you're doing follow-ups, you're dealing with tire kickers. You're so it's it that I think that's the point I really want to highlight. It's like when you think about everything you just went through this salesperson, what's his name by the way, Julian, Julian gets a notification on day seven saying, hey, there's some open deals here who have had an Eagle View done. They've seen a proposal. They've seen the price. They've opened these emails or they haven't. He'd be able to see all that. And here's what you need to do to basically move this along, which is just kind of like, hello, why aren't we like this? It just seems so simple when you explain it. Uh, but obviously, it's very difficult to implement. And uh, that's kind of why I wanted to, to talk to you guys about this. Um so from the, you mentioned this, the, the showroom, Di, yes. tell, tell me a little bit how that kind of intersects with this whole process. Yeah, I'll get to that. But I know that, uh, Devin, you had uh, a great analogy when we were talking before. Yeah. So our salesperson. Yeah, we have, we have Julie and I, I would consider him our high level person again, getting back to keeping high level people doing high level things. And if this was a restaurant, we have Julie and he's, he's grilling the steaks and we have the, the VA, she's peeling and cutting the potatoes. It's why, why waste your, your chef's time on potatoes? He, he's, he's, he's focusing on the meat on the grill. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very, very good analogy. And, and I, I think that that's like what you guys have done is is a seamless way to have people stay on leverage time versus deleverage time. Listen, if you like that clip, you can watch the full episode by clicking here. If you're not yet subscribed, you probably should be, and you can do that by clicking right here.